Hi, everybody. Welcome to our final Google Hangout of our admission series. This Google Hangout is going to be on global education, and we have a lot of really great Duke students here to talk about the places that they studied abroad, the programs that they participated abroad, and then also domestic global education as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and introduce myself and then let the rest of the Duke students introduce themselves really quickly. Um, my name is Sarah Haas. I'm currently a junior at Duke. I'm majoring in women's studies and minoring in Arabic and education. Um, so kind of an interesting trio. If you've been watching the rest of the Google Hangouts, I've been hanging and answering y'all's questions um, in quite a few. So I'm really excited to get started on this Google Chat. And we ask that any questions that you have, you just post in the bottom um, chat area of the video. We're here to field any of your questions about global education um, and student life in general at Duke. All right, so now I'm going to let first Nadia introduce themselves, and then we'll go through the rest of the panel as well. Hi, so I'm Nadia. I'm a junior like Sarah. Um, I'm majoring in cultural anthropology with a minor in French and poli sci, so political science. Um, in terms of global education, I've been to Paris for the summer, and this summer I'm also going to Hong Kong, um, and I'm funded by the Global Education Office. All right, great. Vinesh? Hi guys, I'm Vinesh. Um, I did a, I did the first web chat, so you might have seen me there. We were talking about academics at Duke. Um, I'm a senior. I'm majoring in international comparative studies, and I'm minoring in global health. Um, through Duke, I've been I've been fortunate enough to study abroad in Madrid, Spain. I did that in the fall of my junior year, um, and I also participated in Duke Engage in Hyderabad, India, this past summer. Great, Mansoor, tell us where you're at. Uh, hey y'all, my name is Mansur Safi. Um, I'm a junior at Duke. I'm a biology major from Chicago, but um, I'm actually in Sydney, Australia right now. So I'm studying abroad as we speak. Um, the time difference is a little different <laughs> for me. It's the morning, not the evening here, but I'm happy to be here. And uh, oh, I've also been uh, Duke engaged in Seattle through Duke. Great. Audrey. Hi, um, I'm Audrey. I'm a senior majoring in English and Political Science. Um, I spent a summer in St. Petersburg, Russia, and a semester in Paris, France. Great, and then Connor, you want to? Yeah, I'll finish it up. <laughs> my, name is, uh, my name is Connor Quinn. I'm a junior here at Duke. I'm uh, double majoring in Public Policy and uh, Asian and Middle Eastern Studies with a uh, focus in uh, Chinese. Uh, I studied abroad twice. Once was over the summer uh, in Beijing, China, uh, and I also studied in the fall in Shanghai. And I've also visited uh, Duke's Kunshan campus, uh, which is the new kind of uh, Chinese campus that we've uh, started off and will be opening next year. Great. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for introducing yourselves. Um, so like I said earlier, if you just tuned in, this is a Google Hangout with current Duke students um, on campus right now and in Australia as well. Mansoor is studying abroad currently. Um, and we're here to answer your questions about global education. Um, so feel free to ask any questions about global education, Duke student life, and you can just comment in the below section. Um, but for right now, just to get started, I'm just going to ask the panel what your favorite memories um, or current memories, if you're currently abroad, um, are of you know what global education and Duke has had to offer and your study abroad experiences. Anybody can chime in. Um, I guess I'll start because I'm kind of abroad right now. Right. Um, well, it's. I think I'm only halfway through, so I feel like there's a lot of great memories still left to be had. But um, one of my favorite memories here, uh, there, I'm about like 15 minutes from the beach, like a, a 15 minute, 20, 15, 20 minute walk, or like a five minute bus ride, and there's this amazing um, hike from one major beach to another. And uh, we woke up at sunrise uh, a couple weeks ago on a Saturday morning, walked down to the beach, and just watched the sunrise over the water, and then did the hike over. And um, I'm from Chicago, so I'm kind of landlocked. We don't really have oceans there. And for me, I'm just sitting down on the cliff, overlooking the water, and the sun's rising, and it felt like a completely surreal moment. I didn't think I'd be able to do that. And then all of a sudden, to see that Duke allowed me to go there for a semester and make that happen was just pretty unreal. So I can't believe it actually happened. Nice. I'm jealous of Australia. It sounds wonderful. Um, so I was in, like I said, I was in Spain uh, my junior year, um, and I guess my one of my favorite memories is more um, is more of a prolonged memory. Um, and so throughout my semester, I would I would go to this this sort of coffee shop down the street, um, and it was right between um, some really really prominent some really really famous museums in Madrid, um, which is you know it's a beautiful location. There's lots of really really nice art around you. 
Um, but I remember walking in one time I and mean, sitting down, and before I got to order, the guy, because he'd seen me studying there so many times, came over with my order and, and laid it down for me, and we started talking. And I kind of—it was at that moment that I kind of realized that I was—I was actually living in—I was living abroad. I was in Spain, um, and I was—I was a Madrileño, just like everybody else. And that was a really cool moment um, to realize that you could afford me that opportunity to um, to live elsewhere um, that I wouldn't have otherwise lived. Yeah, definitely, Connor. What about you being in China? Yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, uh, being in China is a little bit different uh, than being uh, being a lot of other places. But for me, I think my overall favorite experience. Uh, was just kind of recognizing at the end, uh, right before I was about to leave, just like kind of how much I had learned and how much I had grown uh, within my experience. Uh, the first time I was in China, I did an immersive language program. So uh, once we got off the plane, we were actually only allowed to speak Chinese uh, for the two months that I was there. Uh, and that was just a really cool experience by the end of that uh, to really realize how much I had grown. Uh, we had gone out. Uh, I ended up making a number of friends uh, on a, a like intramural basketball team on the Chinese campus that I was at. Uh, and one night we got we all went uh, after one of our games went out together uh, and I was I felt like I was kind of at Duke that I could have been you know playing in in Wilson and gone out with these guys as my friends uh, which was just kind of shown how much I had grown uh, in my language skills especially at that point and that I was able to kind of really kind of fully immerse myself in that culture and feel that feel that I wasn't an outsider anymore which is a uh, which is a really unique experience considering you know when I got off the plane I definitely I definitely felt like I was an outsider at that point and, and after just two months how much I had kind of grown within that. Um, I'd say my favorite experience, probably studying abroad in Russia. Um, you know, his um, apartment has been turned into a museum, um, and so being able to go there was really amazing for me. Um, and then also when I was studying abroad in France, being able to show all of my Duke friends who were studying abroad um, in Western Europe around the city, um, and that was really rewarding. So I really felt like I had come to really know the city enough to be able to kind of present it um, to other people. So. Awesome. That's really cool. What about you, Nadia? No, I agree with what Audrey said. When I was in Paris for the summer, um, the best part is that you start to feel like you're a local. Um, so when your friends visit, your parents visit, you know the metro system, you know the way, um, and you're super independent. And I feel like even on Duke's campus, you're surrounded by so many students, but if you're abroad, you really are on your own, and you do things by yourself, really for the first time, and that's what, I guess, stuck with me. So we actually just had a question come in um, from Tanner Johnson. Thank you for submitting. The question is, what are all of the global education programs, and how do they differ? Um, so that's obviously a huge question, but we can definitely talk about a few of the programs that we've been involved in, um, and then how they're very different. So perhaps somebody could talk about, like, um, a, a semester abroad, a summer abroad, versus maybe perhaps to engage or independent research projects or things like that. Before uh, before we answer the question, Tanner, I'd just like to point out that um, the cool thing about global education at Duke is that it can, it can almost be anything you want it to be. Um, and whether you're going through Duke Engage or whether you're going through a semester, a semester program or a summer program, um, there's so much opportunity to sort of design your own experience um, and really go after and pursue uh, any subject matter that you want to pursue. So I think that's a huge advantage that Duke offers that, um, that you know, that we're very fortunate to have at our, our global education office. Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about um, just a semester abroad. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of different opportunities through global education to do a semester abroad. I know for me, I kind of knew ahead of time that I really wanted to do Australia, so that narrowed it down. But I could totally see how if you had no idea where you wanted to go, which is a completely okay thing. I know so many people have no idea what they want to do a few years down the line, right, when they walk in the door. Um, there's so many opportunities. Right when you log on to the website, there, there's just like a huge list of programs, and those are just the um, Duke in programs. So those are programs where a, a group of Duke professors will go into um, a foreign country and um, administer the program. Then there's also the opportunity to do uh, Duke-approved programs, which is what I'm doing. So I'm directly enrolled in the university here. It's the University of New South Wales. So um, there's no Duke professors, no real Duke affiliations, other than um, the fact that uh, Duke has a working relationship with the university. So you can go through programs that have just been approved as accredited programs through Duke, or you can go through a Duke in program. And then um, I think uh, Connor also has experience work, uh, going into a new program as well. So um, if he wants to talk about that at all, go for it. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, that's really 
kind of the key of global education at Duke is that they recognize that you know everyone at Duke has very different interests and it'd be possible to run a program in every city uh, that every Duke student would ever want to go to. Uh, so they're really flexible and really happy to work with you. I ended up every Duke student uh, has access to global um, advisors who people will work with you and kind of figure out you know where you're looking to go and try to find programs and help help you along the way. Uh, for me, for my semester program, I really wanted to go to Shanghai. Um, that was something that I thought would be really interesting. I found a program that also offered an internship while I was there. And I thought because there's such a big difference in, uh, in kind of business culture between China and the United States, I would really value my education from having an internship as part of my study abroad experience. Uh, so I found a program that, was, uh, that no one had been on uh, ever before from Duke uh, and brought it to my global advisor and, and said, you know, this is something I really like to do. Uh, and I, they worked with me really um, throughout the whole process, uh, letting me know what to do. And it was a really straightforward process. You know, you just need to go to uh, some some people within different departments to make sure that they think the classes that you're going to be taking are are legitimate classes. Um, but once they sign off on it, you can go and, and you have the same experience that uh, that everyone else that everyone else at Duke has, whether it's a Duke in program or a Duke approved program. So I think really that's kind of a great way to look at it is the fact that they're really flexible in their office uh, and they want to to make sure that you have the best kind of global experience uh, that, that you can. Yeah, definitely. And if you want to uh, check out more information about these programs that Mansoor and Connor and Vinesh were talking about, a great website to visit is globaled.duke.edu. And they'll kind of, they have some pictures, some student stories, as well as just like a list of programs. And like um, Connor and Mansoor were talking about, you can also petition in for a program that perhaps Duke doesn't offer. Another um, program through global education, like outside of study abroad, is Duke Engage. Um, and that's a program, a civic engagement program that's very unique to Duke in particular. Um, that a lot of students, you know, say currently at Duke, say, you know, this is the reason why I wanted to come to Duke. I was really lucky enough to participate in a Duke Engage the summer after my freshman year in Cairo, Egypt. Um, so I was there for eight weeks doing service. I was teaching at um, a rehabilitation center for street children and then also teaching English at night to young professionals at a, a center for disabled people in Cairo. Um, so I was working all summer long doing a lot of volunteering with Duke students. We lived in apartments like five minutes from Tahrir Square so we were like in the middle of the political revolution. I was there when uh, Mohamed Morsi was elected as president um, so kind of got to see like that political like. I mean, like a history, like something that's going to be in history books. Like, I was there to witness it. It was really awesome. Um, so there's also Duke Engage programs. Has anybody else participated in Duke Engage? I know, Monsoor, you did one in Seattle. Yep, I did. I did. So I did Duke Engage in Seattle. And, um, yeah, that's the thing about Duke Engage. They're both domestic and abroad. So there's a lot of different opportunities to get involved. Um, for me, I wanted to do a domestic program. It seemed a little more aligned with my interests. I wanted to kind of explore my own backyard a little more. But at the same time, what you think is your own backyard is really different. So I did Seattle, and I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, I worked with a nonprofit that helped get young people politically engaged, and I thought it was just going to be, you know, a piece of cake. You know, it's it's English. I know the language. It's uh, it's America, but the culture there is, is so much different than Chicago and Duke. And just getting outside of the Duke bubble alone <coughs> lets you experience something brand new. And then. Um, the, one of the greatest things is that it puts you with a whole new group of people. There's a community that comes along with Duke Engage, and um, you branch out of your social circles. You meet people that you wouldn't have met before, and the whole idea is sharing ideas and learning from each other and learning from the experience. So it was probably one of my favorite experiences at Duke. I did it the summer after my freshman year. Um, I still can't believe I did it because when I was there, everyone asked me, oh, how are you, how are you doing this? Like, you're just volunteering in another city for a summer, and I said, oh, yeah, my school completely funds me. Uh, they fund me for housing, they fund me for transport, they fund my food, and they even fund cultural experiences. So we, we went to uh, a museum, uh, the Wang Luke Asian Museum in Seattle. We went to a Mariners game, which, most, as most people may know, Mariners aren't the best, but it was still a great game. Um, we went to a Sounders game. We checked out the Ballard Locks. There's so many different things, and it's... It's amazing. I could talk about Seattle for days, but I won't take up this whole hangout with it. No? Okay, great. Well, we actually have another question that came in, so I'll go ahead and address that. I know we don't have any engineers, but I hope that we'll be able to speak to this experience. So the question comes from Cece, and she says, I know studying abroad is usually more difficult for engineers, so can you go in more in-depth about that? Um, so I'll just start really quickly. 
I've had multiple friends that are in Pratt study abroad. There's specifically a few locations and programs that are very helpful for Pratt students. They get their requirements. They have engineering programs that are abroad. Um, so it's definitely possible. Does anybody else, can anybody else speak to maybe their friends' experiences about going abroad and being an engineer? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah cool. <laughs> we all can, apparently. We all can. <laughs> Engineers can do it. I think it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I'll go ahead and, and speak on the matter, I guess. I have um, have a lot of friends who have gone abroad as engineers, um, and there's a lot of them who were actually abroad at the same time as I was. So it was, it was really um, funny to hear them complaining about not being able to go abroad beforehand and then realizing they could do it and then seeing them abroad and being like, well, you know, it wasn't a huge deal because you're out here. Um, so I know I know there's a couple programs in France um, that are specifically built for engineers, um, and I know in Australia as well there are um, programs built for engineers. Um, and so all the reviews I've heard um, from my engineering friends who have gone on those have been absolutely glowing. They've had a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, and they've always said that their, their Pratt advisors and their Global Ed advisors have always worked very closely in making sure that their schedules fit um, and that that works out. Um, another really good option for engineering students is to, is to use the, the summer abroad programs because you're still spending a semester abroad, um, but it's not interrupting your regular flow of classes because it is during a summer session. Um, and, and with that program, you don't necessarily have to restrict yourself to an engineering program. You can go on any program you'd like. Um, and so I know engineering students who've gone um, to Costa Rica. I know engineering students who've gone to Greece, really all over the place. Um, so you can choose to go on an engineering program, or you can choose to go on a summer program. Uh, but they're all really good options for students. Great. And actually, um at Duke, like over 30% of engineers are studying abroad. So it is definitely doable. It's something that is very much a part of engineering um, student life at Duke and then abroad as well. And that can be summer sessions. That can be sessions um, during the school year as well. And Duke is definitely flexible at that. We have advisors that will help out with schedules. So it may be a little bit more difficult than perhaps Trinity would be but definitely doable um, and definitely I think a valuable experience that we can speak for a lot of our friends having. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? Yeah, um, they're actually expanding even more. Um, so uh, a couple years ago, uh, they used to say if you're an engineer, you can only go to a few locations. I know Metz France is one of them. Sydney is a big one as well. But um, just this past semester, I, I know someone else that went to New Zealand. Um, uh, and then I have a couple friends that are planning on going to New Zealand in the fall, and they just opened up engineering in Madrid, Spain as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's getting better and better. I wouldn't be surprised if there were even more locations by the time I graduated. Yeah, that's really great. Um, so another question that I have for people, because this was something that was on my mind when I was thinking about studying abroad is, can you study abroad when you're on financial aid, or perhaps are there programs where you can get funding to study abroad? Besides Duke Engage, which we talked about, which is full funding for all students, no matter if you're on financial aid or not. Um, I can... I can yeah, go, for it. go ahead, Audrey. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, I can speak a little bit to that. Um, so, for example, um, with the Russia program, I got a partial scholarship to go, um, and that was really simple and streamlined for me to apply to that. Um, and also, I wanted to, like, if you're worried about financial aid not applying um, and not being able to go abroad during the semester and only having summers, that's absolutely not the case. Um, so for me, actually, it was cheaper for me to spend a semester in France. Um, so, I mean, it's absolutely, people are very accommodating. The tuition in, in France is totally, it's funded, um, and so it's not, it's not a problem at all. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat, so I'm actually uh, on financial aid at Duke, and for me, I didn't even have to apply for a scholarship because I apply for financial aid every year um, for the next year, so I just finished my application right now, and um, the way that the global ed office works is they look at how much your study abroad program will cost, and they look at how much you receive at Duke, and if it's a similar price, they will give you the same amount of aid, uh, and if it's a cheaper price, they will do it so that um, you you yourself are paying the same amount for your education, but, but Duke covers the difference. So um, I know for Australia, what they did for me is um, my program is not a Duke in program, it's not Duke administered, so what they did is they calculated the amount, they gave me a lump sum, they said, here, you get, use this money to pay for your abroad. Um, I know if you do a Duke in program, you're billed through Duke, so they just take care of it as you would a normal semester at Duke. And then um, I know financial aid also covers two summer sessions. For me, I did two summer sessions at the Marine Lab, so I didn't have that option of going abroad. I mean, I had the option, I just used it 
in other ways, but I know a lot of people that for them they used one of their um, summer sessions to go abroad and financially and covered um, an equivalent percentage as they would during a semester. Montsor, since you brought it up, would you mind just talking a little bit about the Marine Lab and what it was like to study there? Oh, yeah, definitely. So the Marine Lab is um, Duke's own marine campus in Beaufort, North Carolina. So it's about a two and a half, three hour drive from the Durham campus. I spent 10 weeks there this last summer uh, studying physics. So uh, students have the option of either going there for a semester or going there for a summer or a session. And um, uh, I did uh, two summer sessions. Uh, one was from May to June. The second one was from uh, July to August. And uh, I studied physics there, which was by far Oh, it was one of the toughest summers of my life, but also one of the most rewarding because um, you're doing physics pretty much all day because it's a condensed, uh, it's a very condensed session. You do a whole semester's worth in five weeks, but the attention I got there, it was unreal. It, uh, I, my professor would stay with us like after dinner, stay the whole night, and just if, if we needed to be there the whole night, if we were confused, he would take care of it. He would bring his dogs in. Um, we had every session. We had a, a different field trip that was built into the program. I went uh, horseback riding my first session. Then I went surfing the second session. Um, and you you live in the Beaufort campus, which is very small, but you get to know everybody. Some of my best friends at Duke now are from the Marine Lab. Like I made some really good friends. I was literally just talking to one on Facebook the other day uh, or last night. And um, you get close. It's a lot like. Duke Engage, um, where you're kind of thrown out of your typical social circles or your comfort zone, so you start to meet brand new people, and um, I, I really enjoyed it. I have a lot of friends that have done uh, Marine Lab during the uh, regular semester at Duke, and they've loved it as well. They all talk about how great of an experience it is. It's, it's very different from Duke, which is often refreshing for people. So we have another question that just came in. Do you still take Duke classes through global education, will a study abroad contribute towards credit requirements? So I did a summer study abroad in Paris, and I took two classes that counted for my um, ALP credits, which is the arts, literature, mm -hmm. and performance, performance okay. credit, as well as um, for my French credits, because I'm minoring in French. So they do count for them. You can take classes that don't count just because it's fun. Um, so yeah, definitely, most Duke, in Duke programs, do offer classes that, you know, contribute. Yeah. So the Duke in the Duke in programs will offer classes that contribute to your major, to your Trinity requirements, things like that. Um, and then even programs that are not Duke in um, will still will still be able to receive um, transfer credits, which is a little bit different because you won't receive um, the the number that equivalent to your grade. You'll receive sort of like a pass fail kind of grade. Um, and those sort of depend more on your major, whether or not your major will accept them, but uh, as like a basic credit, Duke will accept that. Um, and so there's a lot of really cool classes that you can take. I ended up taking um, a class in Spain that counted for art history. Um, if, if I were to pursue an art history major or minor, that would have counted for that. Um, and there's a, really, there's a really cool variety of classes. Um, as Nadia was saying, there's a lot of classes that you might want to just take because it looks cool and it looks fun. Um, one of the best classes I took was in Spain. It was a, a class on Spanish architecture. Just because a lot of found it interesting, and it ended up being very interesting. Right, and it's so great to take a class on like French history in France. You know, it's yeah. not, it's not something you can do in like states or yeah. anywhere else. There's so. definitely something really special about that in particular. Yeah. Like I did a study abroad program this past summer called Duke mm -hmm. in the Arab World. So I spent three weeks. I went back to Cairo. I love I love like that region of the world, and Cairo is amazing. So I went back for three weeks in Cairo and then three weeks in um, Fez, Morocco, and I took an Arab dialect class, I took a religious citizenship class, I talked about American citizenship and citizenship in the Middle East. So it was really cool to be in the Middle East, be talking about these countries, um, you know, like be looking at Egyptian history and then being in Egypt and being able to like walk five minutes down the street and go to, you know, the Egyptian museum. So, and then these courses counted for my Duke, um, my Duke credit. So both of those are counting towards my Arabic minor, which is awesome. So I got to get those credits over the summer, enjoy myself, and have a really great study abroad experience, and it also counts towards my Duke education. Um, so we have another question coming in. And this is about independent projects. I don't know if anybody has um, done any of these. Oh, yay. <laughs> the question is, how difficult is it to start an independent project through Duke Engage? Um, so, oh, through Duke Engage. I didn't, oh, do, I didn't do 
it, I didn't do it through. You can just talk about independent projects, and then if somebody's mm -hmm. done a independent project through Dignity, you can talk about that too. Um, so I'm taking an independent study right now, which is a class. It's like any other class at Duke, but you do it. You create the syllabus, and then you meet with your advisor and everything. And an extension of that class is, you know, you go somewhere over the summer and you do research. So in order to do that, I needed funding, and the global education offered, um, you know, a good amount to go where I wanted. So this summer. I'm going to multiple places, which is another great thing that Duke does. You don't only have to go to like France or Spain. You can go to France and Spain, <laughs> like in the summer, which is great. So I'm going to England and I'm going to Hong Kong in the span of you know four months, and it's funded by the Global Ed Office. Awesome. Has anybody yeah. done an independent Duke Engage? Or does, can anybody speak to an experience of a friend that's done one? Yeah, I can definitely speak to that. Um, I had a friend of mine, um, actually before I answer that, Nadia, um, you're totally right about um, projects that rotate, that some sort of cycle through areas. I know friends who just went um, on, a, on, a, on a semester abroad through China and India, and they spent um, several weeks in both places, and they loved it because you go to experience so many different cultures, and you get to take all these different classes that really compare different regions of the world. So that's, those are cool programs that are offered as well. Um, in terms of independent Duke Engage projects, um, I had a friend who did them last, two summers ago, I believe, um, and she worked in Iceland um, at a branch um, at a branch of the UN, actually, um, and she really enjoyed her time there. Um, and so the process for that is um, sort of creating, um, often it's, it's getting in touch with a host organization um, and sort of setting up, setting up what it, whether it's your internship or your, your service, um, you know, how you're going to go ahead and serve. Um, and then you, you'll get in contact with the Duke Engage office, which is a great office, great program, really supportive staff. Um, and then you'll sort of, you'll lay out your program beforehand. Um, and then once the program is laid out, you can go ahead and pursue it. And they'll, they'll help you through the application process and all that. Um, and it's, it's a very easy process as long as you um, sort of develop what you want to do. Um, and, you know, everyone that has done it that I know has had a really, really great experience um, in designing their experience and designing their curriculum. Yeah, definitely. I had a friend that did one this past summer, and he worked in Kenya. Um, and I, I definitely would say that um, it was a little bit more difficult for him to kind of get that together as an independent project versus, you know, the group projects that are already established. Independent projects, you definitely, you know, you're creating your own project. You, you, you're finding your own mentors. You're finding your own connections in um, whatever country or perhaps is domestic as well. Um, so it's really about, like, creating the project for what that community in particularly needs. And, um... I mean, it's, it's doable. It's def definitely something that a ton of students on this campus are doing. Um, but, you know, you do have to have that extra initiative and that extra drive to really, you know, put together a project that's completely, you know, um, self-driven and sponsored by a faculty member of your choice. Um, so another question that we have coming in. Nadia, do you want to read it? How common are summer study abroad programs? I want to study abroad, but I don't feel like I'd like to leave school for an entire semester. Also, what's the cost like? Has anybody studied abroad in the summer? Yeah, I did the summer study abroad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so I think it's a pretty common thing to see people do uh, summer study abroad. I did one uh, following the summer of my, uh, as of my first year, between first year and sophomore year. Uh, and I think a lot of students end up doing that uh, because it's a good time because uh, you generally you don't have to worry about finding internships or or things like that at that point. So a lot of people find that to be a good summer. Um, I did that. I know a lot of friends have also done it. Um, people generally like it because, like you said, it does give you kind of an experience going abroad. Generally, they're around two months. Um, so you get experience going abroad, but you're not gone from Duke campus for, for, for four months or for a full semester um, in other situations. Uh, but I also know a lot of people who came into Duke thinking, uh, you know, I definitely don't want to leave Duke for a semester um, because of all the great opportunities here. But I think a lot of people also realize once they're going through Duke, uh, that there's a lot of great opportunities through studying abroad um, as well, and I think a lot of people end up changing their mind and, and end up going for a full semester as well. Um, I know that was something that I ended up doing. I had originally thought I was only going to do a summer and then had such a great time after the summer that I wanted to go for a full semester and really experience it even more. Um, I also just wanted to add that if you're really worried about um, missing Duke and missing your friends, one of the great thing about things about Duke, one of the reasons I applied, is that so many people do study abroad that it's not the whole, sometimes the, the half the junior class goes abroad. Um, and so half the time you're going to be 
in a foreign country and your friends are going to be you know in the area um, and so you don't have to miss the full Duke experience even though you are mm -hmm. gone um, and the other thing about summer programs my program that I did in Russia one of the reasons that I wanted to do it during the summer was because I'd only been my language skills in French were um, and so I knew it was a good time to test out test the waters of my um, of my Russian proficiency while having the safety net of after two months you can go back to speaking English most of the time. That's actually a really good point, Audrey, I, I, that I kind of like a question I want to pose is about language and, and kind of interacting with the communities. Did Before you went abroad, did you know the language? Had you studied the language? Or was that something that you did there? Did you feel like you could get around um, without being proficient? And how did that work? Well, um, when it comes to Russian, um, that's a less commonly taught language, so the language requirements for going abroad um, in Russia are a little bit less stringent than they would be for something like French, which is pretty commonly taught. Um, but at the same time, the classes I was taking, I was taking, I think, six hours of Russian a day. Um, so if I wasn't able to get around within you know, a few weeks, I wouldn't be able to get do the, the basics. Um, but And there's some programs where you don't need to have a language requirement at all. Um, but if you are going abroad with the goal of improving your language skills, there's absolutely no substitute for it. I think I learned I, my French and my Russian improved more in the months that I was abroad um, than it would have in a year um, in the States. Yeah, I'd really like to reiterate that actually. So I studied Spanish um, since sixth grade. Um, and I studied all throughout middle school, high school, and I took a class or two at Duke. Um, but I don't think I've improved so uh, drastically than I did in my one semester in Madrid. Um, just being in a place, and I actually I chose Spain because I wanted to work on my Spanish, um, but just being in a place and hearing it every day um, and speaking it in classes and all that, it's, it's an incredible, incredible experience. Um, so I, I definitely learned a lot that way. Um, but there are also a lot of programs where you don't need to know um, where you don't need to know the language to, to be in a place. Um, I know I have friends who also went to, Mid, um, to Madrid through, uh, through an approved program, um, not a Duke in program, through an approved program. Um, and all of their coursework was in English. They, um, they were able to get around even though some of them did not know Spanish. Um, so it really depends on the program. And as you're going through with your global ed advisor, they'll tell you what program suggests that you have some proficiency with the language and you know, what programs you can get away with learning the language there. Um, and, but like you know, like Audrey said, like I've said, there's if you are um, if you are wanting to work on a language, there's no better experience than to go there and, and experience it firsthand. We have um, a friend who went to Spain for two months. She knew nothing. Oh knew, yeah, she knew no, no Spanish, Spanish at mm -hmm. all, and she came back. I mean, it felt like she was fluent. Yeah, she she or she played it off really well. Like maybe she yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> and she's just speaking Spanish all the time now, and going back this summer as well. Yep. So I mean, it's a great start as well. You know, if you don't know how to speak a language or another language, go spend two months learning the language intensively, and then you come back. You know, a new language. Nadia, what is it like for you to have like? Duke be a part of your global education as an international um, student? Right. So I came to Duke from Thailand three years ago. And so being here is kind of like studying abroad, long-term for the study abroad program. Um, so that was part of the reason why I didn't want to go for a semester, because I am away from home, and I'm still getting you know, to America and all that. Um, so I chose to go in the summertime. And it's worked. It's worked out really great, you know. I mean, you have so many opportunities. You can go abroad every summer, um, whether it's Duke Engage or uh, stud study abroad mm -hmm. summer session. Summer session. Yeah, summer session, or mm -hmm. I mean, literally anything. So yeah, I'm I'm very happy with the options I have. Yeah. And there's also there's also been you know there's been stories of students who studied abroad. Um, a spring semester, and then summer session, and then summer session, and then fall semester, and then the next spring semester, because they've had such wonderful experiences. And I think it's, it kind of speaks to how, how excellent the global ed office is in helping you plan your, your experience abroad. Um, and it's all, I think it's also really, really cool that Duke does that, where it doesn't limit you from wanting, if you want to travel and go abroad and study abroad, it doesn't limit that, and it, it encourages you to find programs that, that will really fulfill your curriculum. Um, it helps yeah. you do really well. 
It's actually funny because I left Thailand. I'm from Thailand. I'm from this little town in Thailand. And I came to Duke, and I realized that the year I arrived at Duke, they started a Duke Engage program in my hometown, in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Um, so you hear about these new programs in these very far off places, you know, starting up every single year. So by the time we graduate, yeah, I'm sure there's programs gonna be something all over. More. Yeah, it's and great. the other great thing about Duke is that not only is there um, study abroad opportunities like for semesters or through Duke programs like Duke Engage, but there's also like classes that will go abroad too, um, like during breaks or like over yeah. weekends or things like that. Like um, I know that there was one class. I mean, this isn't abroad, but there's, there's one class that goes to Hawaii. It's like a natural science class. There's one class that goes to Israel. It's like science innovation. Um, Duke Immerse. Has anybody done Duke Immerse? I have. I have a lot of friends who have. Did you speak to it, Audrey? Yeah. So um, some of the people that actually went to Russia with me and stayed on longer than I was were part of. Um, it was a, it was a it was a dig program. Um, Duke Immerse Global, um, and so that was completely free. And they had, um, I think, the summer, the semester before going abroad, they had like really intensive. This was for, was for Russian, um, really intensive Russian classes, um, and then they had, you know, this kind of fast track experience for like the whole summer um, in Russia, and it was totally funded. Um, and that's a really wonderful opportunity if like you really want to dive headfirst into a language experience, but you don't have like a lot of background. I think that would be a wonderful experience for like, it was new when I was um, a sophomore, end of my sophomore year. But if you were a freshman coming in and you, you know, were really passionate about learning the language but had no background, it'd be a wonderful opportunity and it's, there's no cost. So, there, and I feel like there's no, there's no risk. It's a, just a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, there's like those immersive language programs and then there's also um, a pro another Duke Immerse pr program where I, um, once they're like Keenan Institute of Ethics, they go to South Africa. There's one that goes to India, Nepal, um, Nepal, yeah, Nepal, Nepal, and then Jordan, I think. Jordan, yeah. Yeah. Um, South Africa. That? Yeah, South Africa. And so what this program does is that there's they're offered in both the fall and the spring, but your all of your courses will be a part of this Duke Immerse. So you become like a community, um, and then you share the same classes with these same students. And then for half the course, you're at Duke, and you're you know you're taking classes with Duke professors, and then you travel with those professors to you know this whatever location that corresponds with your project for the other half of the semester. So you know you're spending half the semester here, half the semester abroad. You come back, you know they're writing a lot of like interesting research projects and doing a lot of really really cool things things that are based off of different themes. So there's one that's fo focused on ethics and immigration and uh, refugee rights. There's others that are focused on human rights, racial relations. Um, is there any, I'm trying to think if I'm missing one. No, those are the two big ones that I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. But um, those are also really great opportunities to um, kind of learn outside of the classroom that Duke offers through different global education programs. Um, so one last question that I have, and, and just to reiterate for anybody that just joined in on the Google chat, is we're current Duke students and we're talking about global education. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat box below the video and just feel free to ask any questions about you know what it's like to study abroad or um, what kind of global education programs that we offer here at Duke, and we're here to answer your questions. But I just have a question that I want to pose to the panel. Um, when you came to Duke, did you expect to study abroad? and if so, where did you think you were going to go versus like where did you actually go and what were you actually doing? Um, well, I definitely thought I was going to study abroad. It's one of the number one reasons I chose to come here was because I knew it was very common um, and that told me that it was an, an easier thing to do and that people were facilitating it um, through the school. Um, but I knew I was going to study abroad, but I thought that I thought that I was going to spend a year in France and then sophomore fall in at the Duke of New York program. Um, because it's one of the programs where um, it has a, sort of a, a mixture of there's an internship component. Um, it has you have got English credits for my English major, um, either that or, or Duke in LA. I think that one thing that I really liked was that, for example, the like Duke doesn't try to be all things to all people. It recognizes that, for example, you know Duke Duke isn't in New York is not going to have the cultural opportunities that you might want, from, you know Broadway plays and that kind of thing. And also Duke isn't in LA. Um, so if I had wanted to experiment with film school for a semester, I was not going to be able to do that there. But through Duke and with Duke credits, I would be able to do that at you know USC Film School. Where I could go study abroad in New York for a semester. And then I thought I was going to spend a whole year in France, which I didn't end up wanting to do. Um, but the one thing that I do want to add, like in case nobody asks, um, is 
it's you can double major and study abroad if you plan it well enough. Um, and I know a lot of people think, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish on time and then take a, you know, a whole semester or a whole year to run off to a foreign country, but that's not the case. And don't let your academic aspirations or how much you want to do limit you from studying abroad because with global advising, they will figure out a way for you to do it. Um, and, I mean, plenty of people make double major and go abroad. So that's my spiel. Awesome. What about you, Mansoor? Did you uh, expect to end up in Australia? Yeah, so for me, um, I... I knew I was going to go abroad the moment I walked into Duke's campus. I was asking those questions before I even got here. Um, I knew I wanted to go to Australia from the moment I walked here. Uh, I, I've just been fascinated with the country for years now. Um, I did change which city I ended up going to. I was originally going to go to Melbourne. Now I'm in Sydney. Um, awesome decision for me. I'm really glad I did it. I just I was just in Melbourne two weeks ago. Uh, I had an extended weekend there, so um, I, I knew ahead of time. But I also toyed around with different ideas as the the decision was coming closer. I, I know a lot of people that were choosing different things, and they were t tossing up between, oh, do I want to go to this place, or do I want to go um, to this other city that's maybe more like a major. It's uh, the thing about your semester abroad is there's it's more than just what you're studying there. It's also about the location you're going to be in because I think you learn so much more outside of the classroom than you do inside the classroom, and I think that goes for Duke as well at times. But um, I, I, for me, I, it just seemed like the best choice. I knew it was the, the city I wanted to be in. It's the, Sydney's a booming metropolitan center. It's uh, just a melting pot of cultures. And on top of that, I'm taking more classes towards my major here than I actually would in an average semester at Duke, so it didn't even limit me academically either. So when I add everything together, it seemed like the best choice, but it was definitely a thinking process. And if you have no idea where you want to go, but you know you just want to go abroad, that's completely okay. I actually just recommend exploring, and um, you, I think overall you'll get an experience that's worthwhile regardless of where you go. Yeah, definitely. They have, like, I remember... Um I remember I knew I wanted to go abroad, but I wasn't really sure where, and it really it was my Arabic studies that kind of took me to the Middle East, but they also have, like, global ed fairs um, where they will come in, the global education office will come in with lots of, um, you know, different uh, setups for different programs and brochures and information, and people from those programs will come as representatives, and you can really kind of, like, ask questions about what it would be like and talk to students that have been to those programs before. They also have a lot of, like, seminars and... Um, classes that are focused on global education as well as uh, different like speaker sessions or like yeah. interactive groups where you can talk to people that have done the programs before. I know I've, I talked to a lot of um, students about you know what it was like to travel to Cairo for example um, and definitely before I got to Duke I had never been outside of North America and then after my first year I found myself on a plane to Cairo <laughs> Egypt so it was like a huge culture, culture shock and something that I was really excited about but didn't necessarily expect and then that next year, I was in Costa Rica for a service um, a service project through the Duke Catholic Center. So there's other ways to go abroad too through different organizations on Duke. I mean at Duke. Um, so yeah, I've I've been to like three different countries in three years, um, which is something that I did not expect at all. And all of it was paid for by Duke, which is really awesome. So definitely, money is not a pro um, is not an opt op like an obstacle if you're on financial aid or if you want to go through programs like Duke Engage where they right. fully fund all students whether they're on financial aid or not. Right, exactly. So even if you're not on financial aid, you can always apply, I think, at the beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many places you can apply to and write, a, write in a good proposal and they're more than willing to fund you for your summer or for the semester, I think. As well. Yeah, and I mean, there's other... Um, like there's departments in particular that do a lot of funding as well. I know the public policy department, for example, has a lot of um, opportunities for global education and, and learning outside of the classroom in the world. There's the Heart Leadership Program and Service Opportunities and Leadership that is a class at Duke, and then you create your own project and then um, kind of like pitch for its funding, and then they'll send you, you know, wherever to, to complete that project, whether it's domestic, international. I've had students go, I mean, I've had friends, students, um, go to Spain. I know somebody that went to, I think, Portugal through one of um, the Heart Leadership Program, as well as um, somebody that I, I knew that went to Egypt. I met them while I was there. Um, so there's definitely ways to get involved with global education outside of just study abroad or do engage, and it's really kind of about finding the program that you want or finding the um, kind of the students or the atmosphere, professor, mentors that you need to get there. Does anybody have any final? I know, Vinesh, you said you had a story that you wanted to share. 
Yeah, um, I want. I guess this um, kind of touches on what you mentioned earlier about the, all the like the global affairs and all the intuitions that they have about these programs. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the really one of the really cool things about um, about Duke about Duke study abroad and Duke summers abroad and things like that is um, you know the the professors and the and the people who organize and lead these programs are really so so plugged into. Um, they're really, you know, so plugged into the Duke experience, into your experience, and making sure that you have as good of a time, um, as good of a time abroad as possible. So, you know, I, I before I went to Madrid, there's this program, and you, and you walk in, you sit down, and the the guy who's talking to you about the Madrid program is actually the director of the program. So he's a he's a romance studies professor at Duke, and then he also leads the, the program in the fall in Madrid. Um, so I saw him before I left. I went, you know, he was one of my professors the whole semester. Um, and then, you know, I came back, back at Duke, normal, normal thing. And uh, yesterday I was walking out of our library, um, and, you know, and I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking, and I see a guy that looks a lot like Marcos from Spain walking, you know, 10 steps ahead of me, and I yell out, Marcos, and he turns around, um, and, you know, and it's him. Um, so it, it, it's, it's just a really, it's a funny thing to see a professor that you know as somebody, as somebody um, you know, you know as sort of this international professor who's really in touch with Duke and is also a Duke professor. Um, and that was really that moment when I realized that that Duke is really is really global, um, and they really take care of you whether you're abroad, whether you're here. Um, and the professors really care about making your experience um, an, an educational one, regardless of where you are. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any final comments? <laughs> Nadia? Um, well, for me, I feel that your study abroad experience really extends past the, the study abroad program itself. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of people, you know, use it for their senior thesis, for example, or, you know, continue in the classroom at yeah. Duke. So your study abroad experience will always be you um, past yeah. your time abroad. That's a really, really good Wait, I mean, a lot of Duke students really own the experience that they mm -hmm. have when they're abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Connor, you were talking about earlier how, you know, you went to China and then you, you, you returned. You know, what was it, the next summer or the next year? Yeah, within, uh, yeah, it was the next year that I yeah. went back. So, and that's the same thing, like, exactly like you just said. I'm using my uh, experience abroad. I didn't gather any data or anything when I was abroad, uh, but kind of I was inspired while I was there uh, with my senior thesis topic now that I'm, that I'm starting to write. Um, by just things that I was living there and observing and, and something that I was kind of, I saw that I wanted to research further. So I think that's definitely something uh, that's really good to point out that it, it does stick with you and uh, a lot of times uh, it's, it's the experience that obviously doesn't just, just stay with a summer or semester. Yeah. And Audrey, right. I mean, you had the experience of where you went to two different regions of the world, mm -hmm. um, which is it's kind of unique compared to the rest of us. Um, yeah, well, um, in terms of it kind of continuing past um, Duke, I mean, I don't have like a, it's not, was not subject of my thesis or anything, but um, a lot of the political science work that I'm doing in, in Europe, and so I'm writing a paper actually right now um, about um, kind of how European Union um, politics intersect with kind of the new Russian imperialism with respect to Ukraine. That's something that I would never have thought to to connect um, before I went abroad in both Russia and the, and um, France, where a lot of my classes actually had to do um, with European Union politics. Um, so you never know the connections you're going to make just from studying abroad in different places. Um, and from and also it helps that now I can use French sources that I would not have been able to read before. So. Plus, um, another thing that I think uh, is really cool for me right here is. Uh, I've met a lot of Australians, and all of them are talking about doing study abroad themselves in the States. So they're talking about, like, oh, I'm going to come to a school that's really close to you. We should meet up then, or I'm going to come to this school or that school. So I'm not even, like, halfway through my semester here yet, and we're already planning on what we'll do when we're back in my backyard. Like, when I, when I get back to Duke, I'm going to explore the States with them and show them some of my favorite things back at home. So... It, I feel like a lot of these relationships you make with the people you meet abroad are just really strong. Where I'm already, I, I've met a lot of Americans that I'm already planning on seeing when I get back, and then uh, the Australians. I'm so excited for them to come visit me because they're going to get a taste of America, just like I've gotten a taste of Australia. Yeah, the relationships are 
are so long lasting. Like I know that a lot of them are going to be for life for me. I still talk to a lot of the people that I met when I was in Egypt two summers ago, and then this past summer when I was in Morocco, um, I stayed with the host family, and there was a lot of kids in the house. Um, so I had like two older sisters, and we talk a lot over Facebook. So social media is really great. I get to keep in contact with them, um, and I, I definitely think that the relationships that that we that we made kind of like while we're in college and while we're younger and, and you know pursuing volunteering or different academic things are really long and life lasting. Um, so that's something that's really important too, not just like to pursue academics, but also like relationships and networking too. Um, if you want to go that far with you know the people that you meet when you're abroad. I know especially when I was in Egypt, the professor I went with had a lot of connections um, to, Egypt, to Egyptian politics and um, different like Egyptian administration. So I got to meet like a ton of really great people and um, really influential speakers kind of like got to exchange emails and information and things like that. So that's something as well as like that international networking. Um, so we're coming up to the last five minutes of the chat. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. I'm just going to give um, just a few minutes to anybody. If you have any final comments about global education, any advice that you would give to prospective students, or perhaps just a pitch about you know why they should choose Duke. Yeah, I mean, I think I want to go ahead and just say that choosing to study studying internationally, um, it won't. It doesn't. It doesn't make your experience at Duke any better or any worse than anybody else's experience. Maybe somebody who chose to stay at Duke the whole time, but it does give you a whole other perspective on what education can be, um, and it really it gives you a whole other lens to look at your specific discipline because you'll learn, um, you know, you'll learn a whole lot about what you're studying from a different area, from a different place, under different tutelage, maybe through a different univers university system. Um, and I personally think that that's really, really valuable. So that's where I found value in my um, abroad experience. I think it's also like really good to point out the fact that like the opportunities at Duke are just tremendous uh, for studying abroad. And I know when I was coming into it, you know, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in terms of studying abroad. And I'm sure, kind of watching this and listening to all of us, we've been all over the world. Um, I think most of we've hit most of the continents between uh, all of us here in this chat. Um, and I think that can sometimes be overwhelming to people. Uh, but I think the great thing about it is you can come in without any idea of what you want to do or if you want to study abroad. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that Duke has the opportunity, whether you're an engineer, whether you're in arts and sciences, no matter whether you're double majoring, just doing one major, um, you can go abroad and Duke will make it work for you because it is such an integral part of, of our education here. Um, and I think that's what's great is that it, it's just the opportunities are there and, and they're yours to grab when, when you choose to do so. Um, I'll just read just that um, when you're looking at schools and you know maybe ahead of time that you do want to study abroad, it's important to go to a school where that's kind of more normal. I have plenty of friends who were equally as intent as I was um, before starting college about going abroad, um, but because it you know it wasn't really the culture at their school and a lot of people didn't go abroad, um, they felt more like oh they'd be missing out if they if they didn't take that opportunity, um, and that's you know a kind of a personal choice. But I, I didn't I didn't want to be discouraged from going abroad just because I felt like I would be the only person doing. It, and as you could see, exact opposite. And so it kind of it's an atmosphere that encourages you to take the opportunities that are given to you to make your education a truly global one. Absolutely, that's a really really good point. I know, especially for a lot of my friends um, who kind of like look at my my experiences going abroad and things like that. Um, their universities just haven't afforded them as many opportunities, and I think that's something that's really great about Duke is that they take global education really seriously. Um, there's a lot of different programs. There's they're always expanding to different countries. I mean, even just the university in China is a huge example of that. What Connor was talking about earlier, um, where we've created this university um, in China that is that is Duke, and Duke is really focused on global education. I think that's really important. Um, learning outside of the classroom is just as important as learning inside of the classroom and that's something that Duke really emphasizes and something that has really shaped my experience personally um, and I've had a ton of experiences that I honestly would have never thought I would have ever had and if it weren't for Duke I probably wouldn't have. Um, so definitely if you're interested in global education Duke is the place to be. Um, so thank you everybody so much all the students for being on this panel Audrey, Connor, Mansour, Vinesh, Nadia we really appreciate it. 
Um, and then to everybody that tuned in, your questions were really great. We hope we were able to answer them. If we weren't, please feel free to reach out to any of us. You can find us on the Duke Class of 2018 page. Um, you can also keep your comments coming on this thread, and we'll make sure to answer them. Other great resources are the admissions blogs, which I'm personally a blogger for, and you can find me there, and I'd be happy to answer your questions about global education. Nadia is a blogger, too, and we've both kind of blogged about our abroad experiences, so you can read more there. The website or the URL is admissions.blogs.duke.edu. Sorry, blogs first. Can you get that one more time? <laughs> yeah, blogs.admissions.duke.edu. Right. Um, so that's a really great resource. Other great resources to learn about what students are doing on campus and off campus as well is our social media accounts. Um, as you can see from the, the label that I have on the screen, at Duke Students um, on Instagram, Twitter, Lots of different pictures, lots of d different anecdotes and stories and kind of updates about what student life at Duke is like. Definitely something more than what you would get from a brochure or a website. Um, students like myself, Nadia, Vinesh, we're all posting pictures and of our friends and things that we're involved in. So it's a really good way to see what Duke student life is really like. Um, so please make sure to follow those accounts. Also, Blue Devil Days, we have two more sessions and all this coming week and the next week. We really hope to see you on campus. If you see us, reach out to us, say hi. Um, I had a few people come up to me and say hello, and that was really cool, and I'd be happy to answer your questions in person. Um, does anybody else have any final comments before we close out? If you want to share, like, perhaps your um, social media handles or anything like that for people to reach out to you, that'd be cool, too. Yeah, I think, I, I don't want to speak for all of us, but I think if you were to track any of us down over Facebook and send us a message, we'd be happy to get back to you, um, answer any other questions you might have, whether it's about studying abroad or Duke life in general. Um, um, you know, you can find us, you can find us all on Facebook, you can look, look up our emails, um, and definitely um, try to make it out to a Blue Devil Day, because that's another really cool experience. It's a cool way to see the campus itself and really go face to face um, and get, get some more questions answered. Cool. So thank you again for tuning in, and um, this is the last Google Chat of this series, and it's been really great to talk to all of you, and just as a final note, congratulations on your acceptance. It's a huge deal. We're really excited. Um, the class of 2018 is going to be amazing, and the people that I've already met have been phenomenal. You guys are awesome. Um, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us. We hope to see you at Blue Double Days, and thank you for tuning in. <laughs>